to just, just be with one another, fellowship and worship and hear the word of God preached. And um, I thank God for church. Take your Bible and go to Proverbs 23. We're going to, I mentioned this morning that this afternoon would be the crux of this uh, message. Uh, And um, on this last message in this series on false teachers and, and, and false teaching, and we looked this morning about John, how he said that he had no greater joy than to hear that his children walk in truth. And um, I don't want Let me back up. I would hate to lose anybody out of our church because they got sucked into false doctrine, false teaching. And we see that many depart from the faith. We, we, we looked at that verse this morning. And... Uh, I don't, I don't, it, it, it's incentive to me and it, it adds, I don't want to say pressure. It encourages me in a good way. Not, not, it's not negative. It encourages me in a good way to keep studying the word of God and keep preaching the word of God to our people. And. I always appreciate when somebody will ask a question. What does this verse mean? What did you mean by this? Uh, as preachers, when you are, uh, when you're behind a pulpit, a hundred to two hundred times a year, you're gonna say something wrong. You're gonna put Moses on the ark, or uh, Noah in the wilderness or something. You know, you, you, you're going to make blunders like that, but you, you also may not. You, you also may say something just, that could just totally affect somebody that they'll never get that out of their mind, and it could it could be you said something by mistake. And so, I want to continue this. Here's my burden and my desire for this message. This is really it. Okay, we've identified, we know that false teachers are wrong. We know that false doctrine is wrong. We know that there are, there are kook Bible teachers out there, okay? But here's my, here is my burden. I want our people to never go after false doctrine. I don't want our people to be caught up in false doctrine. And I'm getting ahead of myself, but, but, but let me say this. I want our people that when they hear a message and somebody says something that is biblically not right, I want our people to pick up on it. And, and so number six, Roman numeral number six, point number six is how to not be caught up in false teaching. And, it's, and it can be easy. Number one, be a lover of truth. Proverbs chapter 23, verse number 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. When he says buy the truth, listen, we ought to love truth so much that we're willing to pay for it. We're willing to invest in it, to buy the truth and sell it. Don't be a sellout. A lot of these false teachers today used to have the truth at one time, but they sold out. 
They sold out for popularity. They sold out for fame, for notoriety. They, they sold out for followers and, and uh, all of that. And, 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 they, and they've sold out. But you have to remember when we talk about be a lover of truth, we have to remember that all truth is God's truth. Truth is only found in the word of God. Truth does not change with the times. That was what was coming out of my mouth next. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I, 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 I kept, it kept coming to my mind this week when I was studying. Go to Revelation. I'm trying to, uh, Revelation chapter 1, I believe it is. Uh, all right, I'm going to send Carter on a mission. Grab my, and on the windowsill next to my desk, grab my iPad. But they're both plugged in, so don't just pull it, okay? Um, all truth is God's truth. Truth does not change with the times. Truth is only found in the word of God. Care more about truth than, number one, tradition, number two, emotion. Why do you go to that church? They, they don't teach the Bible. Yeah, but my great, 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 great grandma went to that church. So? The church that I got saved at. I mean, I went to Christian school there, um, got grounded there. But guess what? I wouldn't walk in that door today if you paid me because they don't preach the truth. They've forsaken the word of God. They forsook the word of God 31 years ago. And it doesn't matter what we're used to. It doesn't matter what emotional attachment we have with it. It, it. it doesn't matter. Sentimental foolishness doesn't matter. Thank you, you're a good man. I don't care what Fisher says about you. I didn't say anything. All right. The Webster's 1828 Dictionary says this about truth. All right, are you in Revelation chapter 1? I want you to look at verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Here's the definition of truth according to Webster's. Exact accordance with, with that which is or has been or shall be. The only truth that's found is found in Jesus Christ. The only truth that's found is found in the word of God. Seek truth, desire truth. Go over to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 8. Isaiah, chapter number 8. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 8, verse number 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. They only speak what they know or what they've embraced. 
And if what they speak and what they've been braced is, is not according to the word of God, it's because there is no light in them. So be a lover of truth. Go over, uh, that's number one, be a lover of truth. Number two, study truth. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse number 15, Paul told Timothy, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I couldn't wait to get out of high school so I didn't have to study no more. Well, guess what? <laughs> Studying and learning doesn't end with a diploma. It's just starting. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Now, I'm going to make a statement. I'm not mind, trying to make not a single person mad in here. I'm just going to make a statement. If it applies to you, great. If it doesn't, great. The average person that calls himself a Christian today cannot be bothered with study in the Word of God. I didn't say they didn't read it. I'm saying most Christians don't study it. Hey, do you know what a concordance is? Do you, do you know how to cross-reference and chase verses down and, and, and study? Uh, do you know what the difference is between a topical study and a textual study? Is? Uh, a, a topic, a study is you search the whole word of God for, for, for the topic. A text, you, you break a, a passage down uh, in context and you break it apart and, and look at what, what's the context of it and who's speaking and what truth is being conveyed and, and how it applies and, and who it applies and, and, and all of that. Study, study, study. And the Bible says much study is a weariness to the flesh. You want to know why a lot of people today don't study their Bible? Because it's a lot easier to go like this. I ain't got time to study the Bible. I got to get to the next level. Study, study, study. Be a lover of truth. Number two, study truth. The word of God, all right, which we know in English is our King James Bible. I'm just, I'm saying average. The average Christian today, it's, it's a double whammy when it comes to studying their Bible. A lot of Christians are too lazy to study their Bible. And what makes their laziness to study the Bible is compounded because, I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of preachers that are too lazy to study their Bible. A lot of preachers don't like studying their Bible. And they're the ones responsible for dispensing truth. I mean... People come to me and ask me with a Bible question. Do you know what they're expecting out of me when they ask me a Bible question? Unanswer. There are some times I have answers. There are some times I say, I got to go study it out. I got to go study it out. And it takes hard work and character to dig in that Bible. I have a new, a new Christian, new convert. Study, they'll ask me a question, and I'll say, I'll study it out. And I'll study it out, and i got an answer. And then there's some, amen, Miss Jean's got emails to me from three years ago I still ain't got back to because I ain't got an answer myself yet. And, and uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, some, it might have been somebody in here. I can't remember. We heard recently about a guy, a, a preacher, something, somebody was... Uh, studied 30 years before he got an answer on something. You know, uh, this, book is, this book is infinite. 
There ain't nobody going to understand everything. There's nobody that's going to have an answer to every question. This has the answer to every question, but we got to get in it and find it. And uh, go over to the book of Acts, chapter 17. The argument today when it comes to things along these lines is, well, it's the pastor's job to feed the people. It is. I will give you pastors which will feed you according to my heart. Jeremiah, it is, the, it is a pastor's job to feed the people. There's no question about that. Acts chapter 7, look in verse 10. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, talking about the people in Berea, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Who was searching the scripture? Paul and Silas? No, the people of Berea. They were searching the scripture. I'm not saying don't come to me with questions. I'm saying if you come to me with a question, I hope you've also looked at it and tried to study it out. Uh, they searched the scriptures. By the way, how often did they search the scriptures? Daily. Every day. That must mean every day, right? Daily means every day. Every day they search the scriptures. Every day. Every day. Isn't it amazing? Our, because of technology, our life is consumed with time-saving devices, and we have less time than we've ever had. I, listen, I, I, you've heard me say this before. I like electricity. I like running water. But you know that you know you know how those old time you want to know why those old timers knew the Bible? They worked the farm and read the Bible. They weren't on Amazon 24 hours a day. They weren't on Facebook 24 hours a day. They studied the Bible. They studied the Bible. How does the people of New Life Baptist Church guard against error? Study the word of God. Soak it up. It said they received the word with all readiness of mind. They were, give it to us. Teach us, preach to us. Go over to 2 Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter three, look at verse number 18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Let me ask you a question. How do you grow in knowledge? You study. You study. That's how you grow in knowledge. I did not grow up a bookworm. I was the kind of guy, uh, hey, did you ever read this book? No, I watched the movie. Right? Uh, but you learn, you learn by studying. Go, over, go back over to 1 Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter four, verse number 13. Paul said to Timothy in verse 13, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. How many here 
other than the word of God, other than the word of God, how many of you by an upraised hand say, I have a book I'm reading other than the word of God? Three out of 30. Give attendance to reading. Reading. Now, the key is this. Do not read anything if you're not reading your Bible. You've heard me say that before. You're not allowed to read anything. Well, you're allowed to do whatever you want. But why should you not read anything if you're not reading your Bible? You won't know truth from error if you're not reading your Bible. And, and, and listen, I, I know preachers. It's been, we had a preacher say it from behind this pulpit. He doesn't read anything other than the Bible. I understand, okay? But there's some good books out there about the Bible. There's some good authors out there. there we have authors. We have, uh, we have authors that have preached in this church that have wrote books. Brother Grady, all right? There, there's good books out there. Are you, are you going to agree with everything that those men say? No, I don't. But if you're reading your Bible, you can spot error. Okay, you can spot error. Do you, do you know? Do you know why it's so hard to read a book and concentrate and focus on that book? Because our minds have been dumbed down. TV has dumbed us down. These phones and tablets have dumbed us down. That's why we get on and we, we play a game. Uh, and listen, I, I, can, I know I got them on my phone. I can waste time too. But listen, it takes away your focus and your concentration. They designed Sesame Street to change scenes every 30 seconds to keep the kids' attention. That's why people can't sit through an hour sermon now. Because the preacher's got to, we got to jump around, do somersaults. We got to, hey, whoa, hey, pay attention. Okay, hey, hey. But, but to just sit and listen and read, we can't pay attention. Give attendance to reading. Number three, don't compromise on the truth. Go over to Ephesians chapter four. All right, this, this, this memory just popped up in my mind. All I'm going to ask you is you've ever observed this with your eyes. You ever see a magazine rack or a book rack in a restroom? How many have seen a magazine rack or a book rack in a restroom? Maybe your house. You want to know why? People redeem the time. There's no other way to put it. They redeem the time. People still redeem the time in that capacity, but they're usually doing it on a phone. I hate it when I'm on the phone with somebody and all of a sudden there's an echo. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 14. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. God does not want us to be 30-year-old children. I mean, if, if, I, if a 30-year-old walks in the back door and they're in diapers carrying a blanket, sipping on a bottle, the first thing that would come to your mind is, what's wrong? Right? But you know what? We've, we have people that have been saved 10, 15, 20, 25 years, and spiritually, they're still on the bottle. 
because they have not, they're still children. They have not, they have not grown in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter number 3. Look at verse number 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Now, listen, remember, I said it last week. God means what he and says what he and then words have. What's the first word of verse 16? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In other words, don't hinder it. Don't hinder the word from dwelling in you richly and fully, completely saturated with it. I mean, and not just, and not just being soaked down with it, but richly, mean, meaning full, great value, a high price you put on it. Don't compromise on the truth. All right, we don't have time to go all through these verses, but I'm going to give them to you, read them to you. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. 2 Thessalonians 2.15 Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. 2 Timothy 1.13 Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Hold fast. If I handed you to, uh, this afternoon an envelope with, with, with 10 $100 bills on it, would you hold fast? Would you hold fast? Would you guard it? Would you, I mean, just... Oh, man, I wonder where I, I wonder where I put that thousand dollars. No, you're going to hold fast. Or I would think you would. I mean, if thou, if a thousand dollars doesn't have that much value to you, then you wouldn't hold fast to it. Second Timothy chapter three, verses 13 through 17. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Titus 1.9, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. And then there's a warning. Go over to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Verse number 17. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. That is a direct exhortation to the church, to the Christian, to the child of God, saying you better be careful, beware, lest you be led away with the error of the wicked. Stand without apology or compromise on the truth. Be steadfast. Hold on. Guard the truth. Buy the truth. Sell it not. You want, you want to know how to not be... Uh, um, how to not be caught up with false preaching? Number four, be led by the Spirit. Go to John chapter 16.
Verse number 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. The Holy Ghost will not open the book to you if you are walking in the flesh. If you're being led of the flesh, the Holy Spirit of God is under no obligation to open that Bible to you. He's under no obligation to, to enter, uh, uh, to, 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 just, to just dump it on you. Uh, do you know who Jesus feeds? The hungry. He feeds the hungry. Hunger and thirst after righteousness. Don't live a life after the flesh and then wonder why you don't understand the Bible. Don't, don't live a life of sin and pleasing the flesh all week long and say, I'm not getting nothing out of the preaching. And there are people that will do that. 99% of the times when somebody leaves a church that says, I'm not getting fed there, it's not that they were not getting fed there. They weren't hungry and didn't eat. But if you're leaving all of your learning and, and expertise on the preacher, then you're only getting fed two days a week. Do you eat physically two days a week? No. Probably eat every day unless you're planning on not, fat, uh, not eating if you're fasting. All right, but you have to be led by the Spirit of God. And you have to desire it. And so let me just, let me just in, in closing here, we have to remember that false teachers, apostates, heretics are everywhere. Everywhere you turn around. Very, I would imagine very few churches in Dover Foxcroft this morning the preacher got up and proclaimed Bible doctrinal truth. You say, you making a judgment? Yes. Yes, I am. Because the spirit of Antichrist is everywhere. And there are false teachers everywhere. False teachers are everywhere. They are in cults and false religions all around the world. Let me say this. They're in every denomination in the world. False teachers, heretics, amen, they are in every village, every town, every city, every state in the United States of America, around the world. They are in independent, fundamental King James Baptist churches. They have visited New Life Baptist Church. They have visited this church as visitors in our services. They have visited this church as preachers in our meetings. You say, here? Yes. There's, listen, okay? You got 25 preachers in a camp meeting. Uh, you're going to hear something that's not doctrinally straight, Okay? I think, my, I think my running track record, I have, I have two preachers that have been here that I have uninvited to come back because of heresy. And I, and I have told both of them, I, I can't have you back. I love you, but I cannot have you back. And we have had heretics and false teachers visit New Life Baptist Church as pretenders who just want to poison our people. Let me just, can I help our church? Okay, this is for New Life Baptist Church. When a visitor shows up and you don't know who they are, and they are eager to immediately engage you in talk about Bible doctrines, they're probably nuts. They're probably a false teacher. Well, they just love the Bible. No, 
Satan also loves to be quick about deceiving people. We, we had a visitor here during the meeting. And I just introduced myself to him. And his response was, this is my name. I, I believe in following the dietary laws of Leviticus. I believe in going to church on Saturday, not Sunday. Uh, and I'm a Calvinist. That's a, that was the first words out of his mouth. I said, you're not going to like it around here. He said, why is that? I said, we're against Calvinism here. I teach and preach against Calvinism. As a matter of fact, I just did two weeks ago. I thought that would do it. He came back. The next day, and the next day, and the next day. But when somebody just offers you that information right off the bat, radar, beep, 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 hello, probably it whacked out. And if they engage you and want to talk about the Bible and they sound weird, just walk away. Just walk away. We have two guys that have been here recently. And you know who they want to talk to about the Bible more than anybody else? The ladies. Danger, danger, danger. Danger. Husbands, keep an eye on, on these nuts talking to your wives. Amen. Go up and res rescue them. Especially when the, eye, the look on their eyes saying, Amen. Let me give you a final warning here about false teachers. Be careful about teachers and preachers who claim to have gotten something new from God or the Bible. Ecclesiastes 1.9 says, The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20, Knowing this, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. All right, when you hear somebody say, I'm going to show you something God showed me and he hasn't showed anybody else. It's false. It's false. It's error. It's, it's false doctrine. Two possibilities when a preacher says that. Number one is probably heresy. Number two, it may be true. But if it is, it's not new. It's not new. I was in a meeting in, in Buffalo here years and years ago, and, um, and this preacher got up and he said, I want to I make a statement that God has given me and nobody else. I loved it. My mom is here to verify it. We were together. The very next day, we're in downtown Buffalo. We drive by an Episcopal church and that same saying that God gave that preacher the night before was the saying on the sign of that Episcopal church. I sent the guy a message. I said, they must have watched your service last night. You know what he responded by saying? Awesome. There is a podcast based here in Maine that is put out by King James Independent Baptist Preachers. And there is lots of heresy being taught on that podcast in the form of uh, Calvinism and hyper-dispensationalism. You know, like... This much of the Bible is written for us. That's all, that, that's all that is written for you and me. And there's one of the guys that kind of oversees that thing. Like he started this. And, and it's kind of, uh, it's like a debate setting or a discussion setting where they discuss some things. And, and this guy brought out some, we some really weird 
never before, before heard thing. And when one of the guys asked the head guy about this new doctrine that he had never heard of, and, and, and he wanted to know where he could study, where he could study it, that what he, what he was telling them. And the guy said, well, that's where things get really complicated. He goes, you, you're really not going to be able to read or listen to anybody else on this topic because it was God, something that God gave only him recently. I don't even have to listen to him anymore to know that that's not right. Watch out. It's poison. It's poison. Study the truth. Stand for the truth. Radically and staunchly guard the truth. Defend the truth. It is my prayer every week. Lord, protect our church against doctrinal error. Do not let our folks get wrapped up in false teaching. Don't let me get wrapped up in false teaching. There's a young guy that got, he got, he got caught up in Calvinism. He pastored a church in New Hampshire. He started teaching it in his church. And thank God there was some people in his church that took a stand against it. And said, we don't believe that. That's heresy. This ain't going to work. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. As a pastor of this church, I want our people to know the truth. I want our people to seek the truth. I, I want our people to desire the truth. I said it before, I say it again. I want our people to, if they, if they have to hear error in a message, their truth radar goes off. I do not want our people to be led away by false teaching and, and, and false teachers. I've seen young preacher boys get wrapped up in false teaching and take a good girl and a good, uh, a, a good family out of a church and go to a church where, there, where there's that false teaching is being taught and mess them up, mess his wife up, mess their kids up. I don't want that to happen here. I don't want our church. I want our church to be guarded against it. I want our church to be on guard. I love bringing preachers in here. I love bringing preachers in here that I know uh, and, and, I, and I know where they stand. And, and, uh, uh, but listen, I, 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 it's happened a couple of times. But I've been told when I go to a church, I, I had one guy, and he was probably cocky when he was saying it. He was probably arrogant when he was saying it. He said, I'm going to be listening for errors. Knock yourself out. Go for it. He said, Brother Craig, do you believe everything you preach is the truth? Yeah, otherwise I wouldn't preach it. But I'm human. Make mistakes. That, that, that Romans from a couple of weeks ago, Romans chapter 3, man, I botched that handout. That's why I said change it. And I still wasn't happy with the way I fixed it. We, 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 can, we can, man, this flesh is just bad. We, amen. Where I teach something that, that is against the word of God, if, if I mess it up or, or say it wrong, just go with the Bible. I'm not threatened by our people studying the Bible. That don't threaten me. That encourages me. It encourages me. And so let's, let's love the truth and, and guard the truth and, and seek it. And, and let's, just, let's just, amen, want the truth. Let's want the truth. That's, that's one of the reasons why the Lord had us start this discipleship class on Sunday mornings was to get people grounded. And even those that have 
been saved a while that maybe just need a refresher in, in, the, in the basic foundations of the word of God. And, and when you look at man, you're going to get messed up. This Bible is never going to steer you wrong. This, this book is never going to steer you wrong. Never going to steer you wrong. All right, I've got a couple of announcements, but let's pray. And just, just kind of a couple of closing things. But we'll have a word of prayer, and I'll give you announcements, and then we'll be dismissed, all right? Our Father, thank you for this series. And Lord, uh, really, I was just going to preach one message on, on false teachers, and, it, and, and you just kind of developed it. And I pray that it has been a help. And Lord, maybe we need to go back and rewatch some of the things. And, and Lord, just to get all the information. And I, I th- I'm thankful for those of our folks that do that. And I pray that you'd bless us this week. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. just.